All right, so there was a shooting at YouTube headquarters. Uh, you may have heard about it. It was, it was news all over the place. And I wanted to chime in about this particular one because it affects, uh, you know, what I do here, or at least involves, um, I, I have a perspective on it because of what I do here on, on YouTube. Because on one level, look, it's just another mass shooting in America, and I don't know what I could say to add to that conversation that hasn't already been said. But this was specifically the motive that this uh, that this woman had, and this is a very different one just for the fact that it was a female that was the shooter this time, but apparently she had a huge vendetta against YouTube. She felt like they were conspiring against her to not monetize her channel, to not uh, support her channel and get it out there and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, look, this is clearly a very mentally unbalanced person. I mean, to, to commit this heinous act and you know she she actually killed herself at the end of it like happens way too often um this was clearly somebody that was disturbed and there are some people out there that are gonna that are disturbed and they're gonna get upset at that level of upset over anything you know i can i can tell you from some of the comments that i read on my channel there are people who are just unbalanced and anything is going to make them go to this crazy paranoid conspiracy level and do something nuts so but in this particular case, there's something that's been going on for a while now. And if you don't really follow YouTube, which maybe the viewers of this channel don't really follow it, obviously the way I do, because I'm kind of right in the middle of it all. But there's been this thing that was called the adpocalypse. Basically, here, let me, let me break down what basically happened. Was YouTube has just, I, I forget the number, but it's, it's something like, it's something like a million hours of video is uploaded every minute or something like that to YouTube. It's just this insane amount of video content. And obviously there's no way that human beings can sit there and go through and make sure that everything is advertiser friendly and that kind of thing. So at the beginning of every video, if it's monetized, you'll have these little pre-roll ads or you can get a little banner ad. You've seen all these ads. And when YouTube runs ads against that, they give part of that money to the creator. That's AdSense revenue. Google, Google AdSense, that's what it's called. And um, what ran in, they ran into a problem because the algorithm was putting ads from these companies on videos that had questionable content. Some of them were like ISIS videos and stuff like that. Not, not all of them. That, that was, that's like the most extreme example. And of course, that's what everybody goes to. It wasn't all about ISIS videos, but it was things like that. You know, if you're running a company and you've got uh, some, some advertisements in the system and it's all done in sort of an auction system through this algorithm and everything, and you find out that, that your advertisement was being played on something just absolutely despicable, that would be something upsetting, right? And that's what keeps YouTube afloat. That's how they make their money. So, of course, they're going to kind of guard that. They're going to take care of that. And, and it also matters to us as creators because these advertisers are, are what are paying our AdSense revenue. You know, if, they weren't, if there weren't advertisers, there wouldn't be revenue for us to make. So you have to kind of cater to that. And a lot of these bigger YouTubers um, were throwing a fit because what they did was they, they altered the algorithm, made it a bit more strict. Um, so that little keywords and things like that that were just sort of embedded in, uh, in the content would set off certain alarms and prevent certain videos from being monetized. I experienced this quite a bit. You, um, you get this little thing and it says that this video is not suitable for all advertisers and you can, um, you can challenge that and do a, a manual uh, review. All of mine so far have gone through, but there have been some that were just really like, what the hell? Why did this get <laughs> demonetized? And I think sometimes it actually comes down to they have the automatic uh, captions, which if you go to any of my videos and look at the automatic English captions, they're pretty funny because, they're they, you know, it's again, it's computer, it's AI, and it's not quite accurate. It's not quite right. And I, I feel like there's a lot of times when um, you look through those captions, you'll find F-bombs and stuff. And, and, the, and so they're like, oh, well, you know, we can't monetize that because it's got F-bombs in it. And it's like, well, no, I didn't actually say that, you know, but, but you do this manual review. It does get looked at by a human being. All of mine have passed. Um, 
But they called this the adpocalypse because there were some big YouTubers that actually lost quite a bit of money because there's a lot of YouTubers that throw out a lot of language and F-bombs and talk about, you know, edgy, questionable stuff. Um, you might notice I really don't curse very much. I probably will in this video. So earmuffs, just letting you know. But um, I don't curse a lot on my, on my main channel simply because of that or that that's one of the reasons another is just I have parents you know <laughs> uh, they, they do not they do not uh, not a lot of language in my family but anyway but the problem is you've got all these big huge youtubers that are coming out and they're, they're decrying the adpocalypse and they're like all oh, mad at YouTube and they're all yelling and screaming and it's fomented this rage amongst a lot of people at YouTube um, and in my mind anyway, it might not sound fair and it might feel like I'm saying that blood is on their hands or something like that. That's not what I'm trying to imply. But that, that fomented rage that has sort of just bubbled all over the place seems to have manifested itself in that one crazy disturbed person that's going to go and do something nuts. And that's what happened. And I want to put a little bit of perspective. If there's any creators that are out there watching this, I want to just give some perspective as to how stupid it is to be mad at YouTube because of their monetization pro, um, policies and whatnot. So I came from a filmmaking background. I made the movie Oceanfront Property in the early knots, 2003, 2004. 2004 and 2005, I started submitting to film festivals. So here's, the here's what that experience is like. I spend a year writing a film, a few months shooting it, and then a whole year editing it and I bust my butt for a good two and a half years getting this film together and then now I've got to find an audience for it I've got to get it in front of people so I submit to film festivals the film played at 25 film festivals but I submitted to at least 70 and each one of those film festivals has a, an entry fee anywhere from ten dollars to fifty dollars or more I mean I spent literally thousands of dollars not just making this content but trying to get it in front of people. So I spend all this money just on entry fees to get it to festivals, and if I get lucky, it gets picked up by some festivals, and then some people see it in a theater, and it's just a scant number of people. And all of this is in hopes that maybe, eventually, just the right person will see it, and I'll get some kind of distribution for it. Some kind of online, or actually online wasn't even a thing back then, not really for video, but a, a video distribution, DVD distribution, some kind of theatrical distribution. I had to go through all that to get that in there. Spending all this money on something that I had spent two and a half years of making, trying to get people to see it. So here YouTube comes around. And YouTube is a thing, and this is what drew me to YouTube in the first place. I can make a thing and click a button and it's up and people can see it. That is such an incredible advantage over what I had to do years ago, spending thousands of dollars just so that, just so that for the chance to people, for, just for the chance that somebody might see it. That's what I had to do. So that's my perspective. That's where I'm coming from. So I get on YouTube and I'm like, this is amazing. I mean, it's, it's a lot of work to build an audience around it, to get to the point where there's actually a significant number of people actually seeing this content that you make. You gotta put a lot of work into it. And it's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, sure, to get there but I'm not spending any money on it. And in fact, YouTube has this AdSense program where they actually will pay you. So th that's my perspective. I went from spending all this money to get scant numbers of people to see it to actually getting paid for lots of people to see it. And then I look at these big, huge YouTubers that are whining and complaining because some of their videos got demonetized. And let me, let me just put something again in perspective right now, and, and this might sound a little bit braggy, so forgive me if it comes off this way, but right now, right now on my channel, I am making more at 160,000 subscribers at that size. I am making more right now than I did at my desk job that I worked for 12 years. And I'm seeing these people with four, five, eight million subscribers whining and complaining that some of their videos got demonetized. Let me be perfectly clear about something. If you are a creator on YouTube, YouTube owes you nothing. They owe you nothing. They are not under any obligation to pay you. They are not under any obligation to support you. 
they have this platform and you can use it however you need to use it to gain a following. It is not YouTube's job to pay your bills. They, they are the only social media platform that pays their creators. You don't like YouTube? Go to Facebook. See how much money you'll make there. Facebook, you actually have to pay for people to see your stuff. Go, go, go to any other social media platform, any other one. They don't pay you. YouTube's the only one, and you're whining about this? I'm, I'm clearly, this is something I'm, I'm a little bit passionate about because, uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm in it, and I'm seeing these people complaining, and it's fostering all this anger and hatred, when really, if you're, if you're making your living off of AdSense, and AdSense goes away, and you now can't make a living, guess what? That's on you, buddy. That is your fault. Um, I have Patreon for this. I sell t-shirts for this. I get brand sponsorships for this. I have gotten to a point now, I'm happy to say, that if YouTube stopped doing AdSense altogether, I'd still be okay. I'd still get by. I'd have less money, obviously, but I would still get by. And that's the goal. That's where you want to be. And if you are a professional video creator and you haven't figured that out yet, that you have to diversify, that you have to have several different revenue streams to support yourself and not just rely on one company that at any given time could press a button and take all your livelihood away. If you have all your eggs in one basket, that's on you, dude. That is not on YouTube. And just a quick note, if you're a viewer and you have a problem with your favorite YouTubers pimping out their Patreon all the time, selling merch, you know, doing brand sponsorships and stuff like that, I am happy to say I really don't get a lot of comments about it on my channel, but I do get some. I do every once in a while get a comment from somebody that's like, would you shut up about Patreon? I'm not going to pay your stupid do to do if, if you're one of those people, you're also part of the problem because nothing is free. YouTube, getting this content on YouTube, you're just getting it for free and then you're gonna like whine because the person giving you that free content wants to pay his bills, wants to support a family, wants some kind of stability just in case, you know, some kind of algorithm change occurs or something like that. You know, um, again, luckily I don't get a lot of that, but I have gotten some. And the, the other thing that always gets me is people who don't support on Patreon, don't contribute in any way, are just viewers, and then get like mad because I say something in a video they don't like, or get mad and like try to tell me what to do on my channel, and I'm like, how entitled must you be <laughs> to get this thing for free and then feel like you should have some kind of say over it, you know? But, um, so, so to me, those are the two different people who need to, again, earmuffs, shut the fuck up, because... You have been given a platform, if you're a creator, to change people's lives, to put a, a message out there to the entire world. I have viewers in, in countries that I can't even pronounce. And that's just absolutely mind-blowing to me. And the thought that somebody else is going to have all these same opportunities that I have and have all the same or, or more uh, you know, visibility and stuff and have the, even more success than I have and then turn around and whine about it. Dude, shut the fuck up. God. And, and, the, and all this anger that's, that's getting fomented is, you know, led to these like conspiracy and paranoia theories that these people have. YouTube owes you nothing. Get that through your head. Anyway. I feel like I've ranted a lot lately on this channel, and I hope that's, well, maybe you want to see that. <laughs> maybe more rants is what you want. Maybe I'm more entertaining that way. Uh, but uh, I think this has kind of become my little confessional booth. This is where I go and, and, and say what I really feel about things. So I hope, hopefully, again, that's what you guys enjoy. But anyway, no, I just, I wanted to say that. I don't know who all would actually see this and get anything out of it, but... Um, that's my opinion. That's been my opinion this whole time about the whole adpocalypse thing. I even hate the term adpocalypse because it makes it sound like this awful, awful thing when really it's just a company doing what they have to do to protect their revenue and the revenue of their creators and the people who generate the content that they you know, are able to monetize, who they've created this platform for, you know, like the... the Again, the, the background that I have and the, and the way I, I can do what I'm doing now and I'm given this, this platform that I didn't have before 
anybody that complains about this is just God. <sighs> anyway, getting riled up. So that's what I had to say about that. Um, my heart goes out to all the people at YouTube at uh, Sam Bruno who were affected by this. Um, I haven't been out there. I've been to the YouTube space in New York, um, but they've all been good people that I know. And um, uh, luckily, it looks like everybody that was a, a victim is going to survive. Clearly, they're going to have injuries that they're going to have to deal with for a long time. But uh, at least nobody lost their lives other than the shooter. But um, let's just put this stuff to bed. Let's put this this anger toward YouTube to bed. It's such garbage and it's so stupid. Anyway. Um, Hope y'all are in a better mood than I am. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. You guys take care. I'll see you soon.